Hello again, everyone. I'm here to tell you another story based on some weird things that I collect. I collect a lot of religious records. Usually they have interesting or unique or bizarre record covers. Um, and this is no exception. This is a person I collect. Her name is Marcy. Also goes by the name Little Marcy. Marcy Tigner was her real name. There she is. She had this doll, a ventriloquist uh, doll by her side, and um, she made a lot of records. And I first started collecting these in the 90s because, you know, obviously the covers are so interesting and kind of unique. And when I listened to the records, the music on them was really unique. This woman here, Marcy, had a, a very unique high-pitched voice, and uh, it just it was one of those things that appealed to me just on a graphic level alone. Now... Every now and then, when I collect these kind of things, I find additional information about the artist that makes me want to collect them even more. So that's the case with uh, Marcy here, little Marcy, a.k.a. Marcy Tigner. And I'm so into collecting her that I'll even get, you know, variations of covers. Like this one here is the $2.98 version here, and this is the $1.98 version. Gotta have it all. I'm just so into her. Anyway, there's a lot of uh, interesting tidbits about Marcy's history, and I'm going to start by sharing a bit of information that I found online about Marcy, and I'll show you a few records I have by her. Marcy Tigner was born Marcelise Hartwick in Wichita, Kansas, August 24th, 1921. She was an American Christian children's entertainer who released numerous albums for several prominent Christian record labels in the mid-1960s through the early 1980s. She used her natural voice, which was unusually squeaky high, like that of a small child, and she developed the Little Marcy ventriloquist doll to aid her performances so that she could give a congruent visual aid to match her unusual voice. She toured the U.S. for several years under the Little Marcy guise for evangelistic crusades and solo concerts. Tigner was actually able to modulate her speaking voice to sound more adult when she wanted to. Tigner's first instrument was the piano, but shortly after, she switched to trombone after hearing a performance of gospel music on the instrument. She accomplished some proficiency on the trombone, winning performance contests at various levels. Now, as a youth, her voice was mocked for being so unusual, and she did attempt to train her voice through formal voice lessons, but these failed, and she put her energies into the trombone. Tigner's first recordings were as a trombonist, made with organist and prolific Christian recording artist Lauren Whitney, slightly after she released a solo tom trombone album for the Christian Faith label, which is what you see right here. I'm very happy to have that one. Now, Tigner's first record to utilize her childlike voice was this one, released September 1960. It was called Happy Day Express, Sing with Marcy. Despite only four months' circulation, it was the 10th best-selling religious record of 1960. Tigner commenced a tour to promote the album, but she felt ill at ease performing as a grown-up woman while performing children's songs with her decidedly immature voice. She happened to be acquainted with Vonda K. Van Dyke, who would later be Miss America 1965, while working on the film Teenage Diary. Van Dyke encouraged her to study Paul Winchell's book on ventriloquism. By April 1961, a doll named Little Marcy was created by the same doll maker who made the very popular ventriloquist dummy, Charlie McCarthy. And the doll was based on Tigner's specifications of herself as a small child. And this doll became so popular through personal appearances that Tigner's name was eventually dropped from the album covers and further recordings and appearances were simply credited to Little Marcy. Now, Marcy's output was decidedly Christian, usually of a directly evangelical nature. After Little Marcy fame hit, she continued her trombone performances alongside her ventriloquism. Tigner released more than 40 albums as Little Marcy, and resulting sales were more than 2 million copies in total. Hence, she was awarded a gold disc at some time in her career. Now, Tigner made Little Marcy recordings for many of the most significant Christian record labels, including Syncord, Word, and Zondervan. She had a weekly radio show at KWIL in 1965. At the peak of her output, she was releasing five albums of original material a year, and sales figures were respectable by even secular standards. 
In addition to strictly Christian material, Little Marcy released several recordings which would otherwise receive the approval of her Christian base, including this 1969 fire safety record in which she partnered with Smokey the Bear. Tigner's output curtailed towards the end of the 1970s. The last original Little Marcy album was called Little Marcy and Mother Goose Go to Church. It was released in 1982, and I don't even have that one. Been looking for that one. By 1982, she was residing in North Hollywood, California. And uh, in the mid-80s, Tigner and the Little Marcy doll made some personal appearances in Oregon, where she and her husband lived, for the next few years. The last Little Marcy products were two short films produced by Lindale House in the late 1980s intended for Christian cable channels. In addition to the numerous LP records, Little Marcy books, toys, and other paraphernalia was produced. Her books were published by Harvest House and Word Books with titles such as Little Marcy Visits the Farm, Little Marcy's Favorite Bible Stories. Tigner's personal experiences drew upwards of 2,000 children. And at one occasion in 1971, an appearance originally scheduled for four performances had expanded to 10 in order to meet demand. She wrote at least two cantonadas for children, The Jesus Story and Noah's Ark, and the latter in collaboration with Joe Rizzo. Tigner's popularity reascended in the mid-1990s when she was rediscovered by junk shop vinyl enthusiasts who sought the recordings for their novelty value. And that was me. That's how I discovered Marcy. She was living in Redmond, Oregon, when she died on May 12th, 2012. And I am a proud Little Marcy collector. Now that you know a little bit more about Marcy Tigner, I'm going to introduce you to a friend of mine named Ed, who is also a Little Marcy fan and collector, and he's got a great story to tell you. Check this out. Hi, I'm Ed Warner. Um, back in the 90s, I had gone thrifting with a friend of mine, and we found a little Marcy record, and he said, you ought to buy that, you can sell it on eBay. So I, I put it up on eBay, and it sold all, almost immediately. So everyone I found after that, I would buy, and then I'd list. And um, so one day I listed one, and I didn't put it as a Christian record. I, I put it in the strange and obscure, kind of weird uh, category. And then in the description, I'd said something about, you know, if you really like weird records, this is it, you know. Um, and then all of a sudden, I get an email and I said, hi, I'm Marcy Tigger, Tigner, the singer on the Little Marcy Records. Most people who, who buy Marcy Records are Christians who want Christian material for the children. They're not interested in anything strange. You would have better sales describing them correctly as Christian records rather than using slander. I hope this information helps. Wishing you God's richest blessings, Marcy Tigner. And I thought, okay, well, maybe this is a, you know, a troll or something. Uh, and then I thought, well, maybe if this is really her, I might just made her mad. So I wrote a really nice email and saying, Hey, you know, I'm sorry. I just, I found these records and I've been listening this way and they've been selling. And, uh, and, uh, you know, I didn't mean any offense by it, you know? And, um, I, she sent me this and said, you know, it's happy to hear from you again. And don't feel badly about having used the word strange, but I thank you for your willingness to describe the records in a more suitable way. You're very kind. And then I wrote her back and said, hey, you know, I'll tell you what, if you send me a, an autographed picture, I promise I'll never sell it. I'll put it in my collection, you know, hang it on the wall, you know, have a story, you know. And she said, yeah, I'd be glad to send you an autographed picture. Just let me know where to send it. I'll include a few other items. There's no charge. I'm honored that you wish to display it next to your other autographed pictures. And, um, and then I asked her about some uh, animated videos and, uh, and, you know, asked her if she would like to do uh, any appearances. So anyway, this is what I got into the mail. She sent me this big package uh, full of autographed pictures. I went with her just with the trombone. Um, and then a, a bio, uh, a little note. And, uh, and one thing in particular is these little itty bitty business cards that used to sit in the doll's hands and people would take the business cards. Um, so anyway, uh, she she said, yes, she had some animated videos, and the idea of an animated series, which I'd thrown at her, was great. 
But she said, I guess that when I retired, I was tired of being so busy and it was wonderful to take it a little easier. She said she had a weekly radio program and a daily television program and was writing songs to record in addition to all the appearances, which is a lot for anybody, really. You know, um, she's very proficient. So anyway, in her last uh, correspondence to me, uh, I'd asked her, was she doing any kind of public appearances? I thought about bringing her to a record show or or something, you know, and uh, she said, uh, I've retired and I'm no longer doing recordings and appearances. There are 38 Little Marcy records, two videos, storybooks, Little Marcy pens, stationery, vinyl dolls, cloth dolls for toddlers, color books, puzzles, and some other Little Marcy items. Um, and until I retired, Little Marcy and I were busy traveling across the U.S. and Canada doing concerts. In our program, Little Marcy sang Sunday school songs. We also sang duets. I sometimes played my trombone, and she played her little toy trombone. She always closed our program by reminding the children that Jesus loves them very much and that he died on the cross in our place to pay for the penalty for our sins so that we can be forgiven and have a beautiful home in heaven when our life here is over. She teaches them a little prayer that they can repeat after her if they want to ask Jesus to come into their hearts. And she puts the prayer in here. Um, she said... For whatever help it might be, I might mention that I have received a gold record and other national awards for best-selling children's records. One record was up for a Grammy Award. I have received many thousands of wonderful letters from children and adults thanking me for my ministry to children. Um, and then she closes with, My most important day of my life was the day I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior when I was very young. The greatest desire is to honor the Lord in whatever I do. I pray for all you folks who sell my records. I wish you great success in your sales work. Sincerely, Marcy Tigner. Wasn't that fantastic? Ed has the best little Marcy story I've ever heard in my life. What a cool collection of paraphernalia uh, from Marcy herself. Now, this is a, the latest thing I've purchased uh, little Marcy related. It's this vintage, I'm going to guess 1960s, little Marcy doll. And as you can see on the front here it says includes this sings to you record which looks like it was a seven inch record packaged in the back of the box now i've tried to find the record i've tried to find imagery of the record any kind of leads on this record and i'm having no luck so if anybody out there has the little marcy record that came with the doll it's called sings to you i would love to get that and another thing i have this little marcy uh book here uh the, the moses story which actually came with a record. I do not have the record. I need the record. So that's two things from my collection I thought I would show you. And now we will end with this uh, piece that my friend Michael Manning uh, from out west uh, U.S. sent me some time ago. He's also sent me Little Marcy records in the mail that he finds in thrift stores. Thank you, Michael Manning. And also my friend Tim Nolan has sent me many, many Little Marcy records in the past. But we'll leave you with this tombstone rubbing of Little Marcy's gravesite. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time.